Hello all. Welcome to lectures of power system operation and control. We are discussing unit 2 that is reactive power management and in this particular lecture we are going to understand concepts related with synchronous condenser. These are learning outcomes for this lecture. At the end of this lecture you will be able to define synchronous condenser, summarize need and issues in synchronous condenser and uh, compare synchronous condenser with static capacitor. Let us revise something uh, related, related with reactive power. So uh, in power system there are different sources of reactive power and reactive power is required to maintain your voltage in the system and uh, it is uh, directly having uh, relationship as far as your excitation uh, system of synchronous generator is considered. So major source of reactive power in the system is your synchronous generator. So synchronous generator is also having its own power factor. Uh, it injects active power as well as reactive power into the system. If that reactive power is not sufficient to uh, satisfy your demand uh, which is there by loads as well as transmission lines, uh, you must have some capacitors in the system. Now there are two types of capacitances. There is presence of some natural capacitance uh, in terms of line. So that is line capacitance and another capacitors uh, are deliberately introduced into the system at transmission and distribution levels. Uh, you must have already gone through some applications of capacitors like power factor improvement. There are presence of some new technologies uh, for reactive power compensation like flexible alternating current transmission systems where with the help of static power compensators and uh, static compensators and some other technologies we are managing reactive power in the system. Just in the same family there is another uh, equipment which is called as a synchronous condenser. Now this equipment you are already aware of. Uh, this is actually uh, existing equipment which plays a role like synchronous condenser. So let us understand what is synchronous condenser. Synchronous condenser is nothing but synchronous motor and in synchronous motor operation uh, we are taking benefit of synchronous motor behavior when it is over excited. Now let me clear you some concepts re related with synchronous motor. Synchronous motor being a motor it will require reactive power. So synchronous motor can operate uh, either in uh, under excited mode or in over excited mode depending upon what is the value of applied voltage and what is the value of back EMF. For the same here uh, I am just trying to clear your concept. You can have uh, this as a this as a voltage vector then you can have the two types of currents in synchronous motor either I lag or I lead. What is the equation of synchronous motor is applied voltage is nothing but divided into back EMF plus IR loss. Now there can be two conditions. First condition is V is greater than EB where synchronous motor will be acting as uh, under excited system. In another case your back EMF of the motor will be greater than your applied voltage and in that case your current will be acting as a leading current and this particular behavior it will be similar to your capacitance action. So leading I will inject some reactive power into the system. So ultimately over excited synchronous motor is responsible for injection of reactive power into the system and that is called as a synchronous condenser. Another condition this motor must be at no load. Now this when it is connected parallel to the power supply it will help in neutralizing lagging reactive component and ultimately uh, will work for a reactive power management. 
Another benefit is the machine uh, efficiency is very high because we are acting that as at a no load and general losses are considered in some literature they have given kind of 1.5% to 6%. Generally it is considered 4% to 6% of KVA rating uh, of actual KVA rating. So general loss is 4 to 6% for a synchronous condenser. Why to use synchronous condenser? What are the benefits? So let us understand some of the benefits of synchronous condenser. You can have a more flexibility in power system operation. Why? Because synchronous condensers provide a fast injection of reactive power. It is a normal synchronous machine. Just some operating conditions changed. So like another similar synchronous machine, you have to synchronize it into the system and it will provide a fast injection of reactive power. Uh, it provides a smooth, stepless and highly responsive, responsive voltage regulation with no switching required. There is no kind of a switching which is a, with uh, other uh, reactive power management equipment like a capacitor bank or even a fax technologies like STATCOM. There is presence of some uh, power electronic switching in a control where there might be injection of some harmonics into the system. So no transients, no resonances, no harmonics, nothing. So that is another benefit. Now increased network inertia helps to limit the network's rate of change of frequency. So this benefit is uh, can be taken from your swing equation where when you are adding any synchronous condenser into the system, ultimately you are adding some J into the system which will help in overall increasing your inertia of the system and uh, it can also support uh, a conditions, uh, transient conditions like uh, low voltage ride through coming into the system. It compensates voltage drops over long transmission lines resulting into the uh, transmission efficiency improvement, uh, transmission capacity improvement as well. Uh, optimal use of space, it's a kind of machine you can uh, install it like you are installing synchro other synchronous motors or synchronous generators and it avoids a constant variation in the taps uh, of the elevating transformers because uh, it, its uh, operation is somewhat smoother than the other equipment which we discuss for the reactive power management. So let us compare the two popular technologies. One is a shunt capacitor and another is synchronous condenser. So there are different points for comparison. Uh, variation of reactive power for a capacitors, you can have a capacitor banks. So you must step in or step out those banks. So there is some switching. It's a stepless or a continuous uh, variation of reactive power for a synchronous condenser. Overload, capacitor banks, not possible. Surges in currents may damage your capacitors. Possible with reduced rating. So you have to derate your synchronous motors. You can definitely overload those. Installation uh, for shunt capacitors, it's kind of a static device. So you can have it's uh, like a box you can put at any place uh, fulfilling minimum requirement. Installation is very simple. Synchronous motor because it is rotating part. While designing you have to consider a number of things like a civil foundation, vibrations, maintenance is very difficult. So uh, that is a typical. So that, that, that brings a drawback in your synchronous condenser. Future expansion not possible once installed uh, for a synchronous condenser. Capacitor, yes, according to the requirement, you can add a more and more capacitor into your capacitor bank and uh, you can have a flexibility in uh, rating of the capacitor bank. Resonance, because capacitor is present, uh, it can have a resonance with uh, inductance of your system. LC component and, uh, for a synchronous motor, not possible. Losses, we already discussed for a synchronous condenser, 4 to 6 percent for capacitor, lesser than 1.5 percent because there is no rotating part. So capacitors only switching loss kind of thing and minimum requirement for uh, you know capacitor uh, for its own there might be some heating losses. Apart from that there is no major loss but in synchronous condenser continuous rotation is over there ultimately it's motor. So uh, losses are higher compared to uh, capacitors. Initial cost less for capacitors comparatively high for synchronous condensers. Effect on short circuit current for capacitor is very less 
But for synchronous condenser, ultimately it's synchronous motor. It's going to add some kind of reactance into the system. So it will impact definitely a short circuit current. Flexibility, we have seen it's a flexible uh, synchronous condenser. Once rating is designed, uh, decided, uh, once you put into the operation, it's not that much flexible. Now, uh, what may be the issues in synchronous condenser? Uh, we have discussed in last slide very high maintenance cost compared to other technologies because it's machine noise production is there cost is high compared to static capacitors below 500 kVA so uh, there can be a break even analysis for that no self starting talks yes synchronous motor is not self starting so you have to start it uh, with the help of some other auxiliary equipment so again that brings you some extra investment Supply may be interrupted due to out of synchronism operation. Typical issues related with synchronous machines. You have to synchronize those with supply. So if they go out of synchronism, while going out of synchronism, they may disturb your existing system, bringing some oscillations into the system, operation of uh, protection system, and it will disturb your supply. And short circuit current of the system increases. Why? Because when you are putting that in parallel, your overall reactance of the system decreases. Reactance decreases, short circuit current will increase. So these are concepts related with synchronous condenser. Uh, these are some of my suggestions. You can definitely come at my Padlet to uh, understand more about synchronous condensers. Uh, you are free to raise queries about uh, this particular concept. Uh, whatever your understanding you can put over there, you are always welcome. Just ensure you are writing your queries. Uh, in the column of reactive power management of my padlet. Uh, these are some reference books I am uh, suggesting. One is J.B. Gupta, A Course in Power Systems, and V.K. Mehta, Rohit Mehta, Principles of Power Systems. Apart from that, uh, there are n number of uh, n number of uh, manufacturing uh, company brochures are available on Google, on internet, uh, like uh, General Electric, some other companies like ABB, uh, you can definitely refer those uh, refer uh, those uh, brochures on google uh, thank you uh, we'll meet in next lecture thank you